Howdy. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Grayson. Um, as he mentioned, soon to be elder. Um, anxiously or excited, as I'm sure I'll get that question a lot. Um, probably a little bit of both. Um, I've been asked to speak on... No, I'm just kidding, Grandma, that was for you. Um, so, firecrackers, broken toilets, and hostess. That does tie in, trust me. Um, but before I get there, let me give a small bit of background. Um, we used to live in Seattle, uh, which I loved, and I still would consider that home as to this is my second home, so to speak. Um, so I love the grain, I love the gray, I love the rain, but more particularly, I lived uh, in an area with a lot less members, as many might as have guessed. And for example, our school was about 1,200 students, which was of a decent size, and about five of us were priests from our ward, and probably about 10 to 15 of us were just from our whole ward in our high school. Um, so it was a lot different experience than, than being around here and going to work and people ask me what my future experiences are, will be and what I'm planning to do and I say I go on a mission and they all already know, oh, I served here, where are you serving? And that's just so much different than what I'm used to. Um, that's a little bit of background and so part of the reason why I think that is neat um, is that I've been able to see a little bit of both. I've been able to um, know what it's like to have really solid supporting friends both in the church and outside of the church. And I think that's helped me a lot in helping me get ready for my mission and such and, and, and so on. Um, so one of the things that we did when we were in Seattle, uh, our, our stake did, uh, was a uh, camp called Camp Helaman. And I know some stakes do something like this, some might call Camp Moroni or of the sorts, and it's similar to an EFY, if you know what that is. Um, at this camp, Helaman, it's, it's kind of like if you tied EFY and, Boy, and Scout Camp and put them together, um, which has its moments of really fun and has its moments of, oh dear, what's going on? Um, but I would say this was a very important camp for me to go to um, for my decisions to make in the future. And this was a few years back. Um, Unfortunately, I was able to go to one of them. My scheduling didn't work out to go to more in COVID and blah, 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 blah. So, um, but this one camp, I had never been before and I was asked uh, about a few months prior to it to be a leader, to be in it. And I was so confused because I've usually the way it kind of works is, you know, you go at least your first year and then you might be, it's set up like a mission. So then you, um, you have your campers, which are your missionaries, your district leaders, which are over the campers, your zone leaders, which are over the district leaders. And then there's the ozone, the cool guys. There's like five to seven of them, of young men that have been the whole year planning this thing out. Um, and I was called to be a district leader. And my brother had been before, and he had, was, was an ozone leader, so I knew a little bit about it, but I hadn't really been. I just mostly heard stories, and I hadn't really known exactly how. Well, I didn't know what that meant to be a district leader um, for this camp, and but I thought, sure, let's go for it. it. Sounds really fun. I get to be kind of a leader. That's like kind of kind of, kind of cool. I um, peacock a little bit, thinking, "Ha, it's my first year. I I was a leader," um, and that was not the case at all, as I soon learned to find out. Um, I went there as a leader, not for as much the elders, but as more for myself and through a particular experience that was the Enos experience. And this was, as we have different activities, we have our physical activities of ultimate Frisbee and, and, and so on. We also have our spiritual activities that are planned. Uh, some are more open, such as devotionals in the morning. We'll go and, and the Ozone will have prepared somebody to come talk to us. But this particular experience was a very personal experience where we all go to our groups, our camps. Um, we have, we're separated into, per se, our group was Helaman. There is another group of King Benjamin. There is another one of Nephi and so on. Um, we gathered together in these groups and we were, we were being taught this um, as we come a day early. We're, I'm learning most of this for the first time. I didn't really know what it was. Um, that 
well, I have this experience. What it is, is um, if you've read the Book of Venus, you might kind of know what I'm, I'm, I might say. Um, we all go separately um, by ourselves and it's a, we're in a pretty foresty area, so it's not too difficult to find a pretty secluded spot where it's just quiet and just pray and study. And I probably read Enos like 30 times to, to do it because we have about two to three hours to do so. And the reason I say that this, I think this experience was the reason why I was called to be a district leader there was we did it, the leaders did it twice. We did it once the day before all the campers come and then we do it with all the campers. And the first time I did it, I got nothing out of it. I sat there for two to three hours and was frustrated and bored and was trying to find little cool animals I could see. Um, and as I finished that whole experience, I, I came out of it and I thought, I, that was awful. I do not want to have to experience that again, but I know I have to, I'm knowing the second one's coming up. So how can I get something out of it? How, cause that's obviously what it's for. I've heard other people, I've heard my brother talk about it, how amazing it was. And I was saying that was not amazing. That was really boring. Um, and so time came around a few days later to where we all have to do it as our camp, as our groups. Um, and as they were kind of talking about it, I decided, you know what, I need to put a lot more effort and a lot more work into this than I did the first time. I didn't try very hard. I kind of was just thinking, yeah, things will come and I'll have a good experience. And that's not the case. When it was time for me to do the second time, it, time went by way too fast. I could have been out there for a whole day. <laughs> I really had to switch my perspective from not as much what am I supposed to do and, and thinking outwardly and looking and, and finding things to distract me. I had to think a lot more of inward, inward thought and a lot more personal Sorry. And this was very impactful for me. I had numerous questions and answers, and it was probably a very pivotal point in my in my experience as my as questions come and and one of the questions, I don't want to share all of them because many were personal, but one of the questions was, do I want to go on a mission? This was a few years back, so it wasn't as immediate at the time, but I knew I was thinking about it. And coming out of that, I knew the answer to that was yes. I don't know when, but I knew I needed to. Unless I'm here now. Um, but I knew that that whole experience of me being a leader was to do it the second time. Sometimes it takes the second time to get to get through what you're doing. The first time you do it, you might not know what to, the first time you study scriptures or whatever, you might go away with it as thinking that wasn't very helpful. Well, you need to keep at it. And that's where I've had a hard time with studying scriptures. Um, but it's the same thing with seminary or going to church or listening to a general conference or of the sort. If you go in thinking, I'm going to take a nap. It, it sounds really nice at the time, but you're going to walk away with not much gained. Especially, especially think about general conference. If you, if you go into general conference, if you have two different people and one of the people goes in, listens, um, it's not that they're completely ignoring it, but they're, they're more just idly there versus the person who's there with a structured mind and questions. It's gonna be a lot too different experiences. One might come away saying, oh yeah, that was cool. What was your favorite talk? I don't know. I kind of liked when the prophet spoke because it was the prophet. The other person might say, well, I have these 20 things that I found or less or even one thing that was really impression upon me and they had a much different experience and this is something that i've been learned that's been very key to me um 
So, as I promised, I tie in my, my firecrackers and such. That was another thing with our camp. Um, with our spiritual side and our fun, rowdy side, as we had many pranks and such. And in years past, uh, it had just built up and built up and built up where they do more and more pranks. And for example, one of the pranks were somebody put a bunch of firecrackers on a toilet and blew it up. <laughs> um, but something that was cool about this year that was a little bit different is they decided to change those pranks to service pranks. And this is something that made the whole experience even that much more impactful. And the service pranks would be such as we have lots of hostess, we have lots of these candies that, that we is key to the event. And we'd go bomb somebody's cabin with a bunch of donuts or something like that. Or we, after cooking, after eating, we would rush to go clean the kitchen. And just kind of combine these things really helped us be always constantly trying to find something to serve was a really easy way to get into this almost enlightened state of mind of because you know if you if you are don't want to do kp because it's not very enjoyable you're going to try and get out and you're going to want to go have fun it's a very different experience than i want to we we're, I have a group trying to give the most service as possible and going up to rush to see who could clean all the plates fastest was sounded at first kind of cheesy but as the, the the week went on it served to or proved to be very impactful on the group as a whole there were a few mishaps here and there of people trying to bring back um, older pranks but um as a whole between learning these lessons and being in a state of mind of service i've always since then tried to keep in my prayers finding more ways to serve others because of how important that's been as well Um, kind of going with the theme of you put in what you get out. Um, I would say that's something that I should probably keep with me on my mission. Um, cause I want my mission to be an impactful experience. Um, I have a poem by Edwin Dalton called man making. And this was given by, um, in a talk of 2000 by uh, President Boyd K. Packer. And if you're interested, you can find his talk. It's called The Cloven Tongues of Fire. Um, this poem reads, and I'm, why build these buildings glorious if a man unbuilded goes? In vain we build the world unless the builder also grows. We are all blind until we see that in the universal plan Nothing is worth the making if it does not make the man. So if I'm being completely honest, the first time I read that, I was kind of confused. Um, it's a slightly older talking for me to get wrap my head around it, but I think it's the last words in there that um, kind of pull it together and make me think, okay, that makes a lot of sense. At the very end, it says, nothing is worth the making if it does not make the man. Um, I think this goes really well with this idea of, you know, if you want to gain something, you have to put something into it. And this is kind of a cherry on top, so to speak, because if you want to gain something, you're going to if you put in the work. And that in and of itself can be its own reward. But not only that, you're bettering yourself as you go. You are making yourself better. You are building your buildings. You are growing. And you're becoming a better person yourself. You're learning how to maybe study more or how to take notes more or improve your personal revelation abilities um, to study, to, to calm your mind. If you're like me, my brain likes to run at 100 miles per hour a lot, and it's hard to kind of calm down and, and, and just listen to what's brought about me uh, from the spirit and from the Lord. Um, so this was a really neat poem because it kind of embodies um, that in a neat lyrical way. Um, additionally, uh, is, is kind of a reason why we might want to put in all our effort. I have a very popular scripture 
um, and I think it's popular for a reason, that it's DNC4, and the whole thing is obviously uh, very impactful, but I'm going to focus on verse 2, which reads, Therefore, O ye that embark in the service of God, see that ye serve him with all your heart, might, mind, and strength. Emphasis on that. That ye may stand blameless before God at the last day. So, if you have a desire to work, if you have the desire to gain, we know that we need to put forth effort. Um, and this kind of is a way that's asking us and a kind of a way for us to know, well, how can we put forth effort? It's more than just trying to think really hard and concentrate. We're, sort, we're trying to do so with all our heart, might, mind, and strength. So yes, that does include our, our mind and our consciousness and our focus, but also our heart and what our desires are. So if we can align our desires with a heavenly desire, or from an eternal perspective, we know what we can focus on and we know what we can really put forth our effort to know. And that's where we can, you can go a lot of different ways with this as far as there's been a lot of talks and recently, especially from Prophet of Personal Revelation, that's one way you can go. It's really individual and that's what I've learned. Um, that's what makes it so neat. It's part of what has strengthened my testimony. If it was the same as everybody, then while that might be all fine and good and there are some things that are that way, it needs to be personalized for each of us because we are each different and we each need different things. I can barely see. <laughs> As all these things together, um, I just want to emphasize um, how important it is to set aside our efforts and to not get too caught up in what our personal habits might be or what our our work or whatever. And it might you might not have to set aside two to three hours to have your personal eating experience. You can set apart smaller chunks of time after church or so on. But if you can have a time, maybe do it more than once, as it took me more than once, to sit down with no distractions and just listen, I can promise you, you'll hear something. By my testimony that these things are true and that you will receive answers if you put forth the work. And they say things in Christ, amen. amen.